This video will show you some basics of QGIS and UMAP. We assume that you have installed QGIS and also UMAP as well as going through the first exercise of a first activity of QGIS and UMAP. As you know, you can find UMAP up in the menu bar. UMAP is divided into a pre-processor, processor and post-processor. UMAP also come, comes with a quite extensional manual that you can find here. Here you can find information on all the tools. For example, here you have a something called a tree generator and here you can find information on how to use this tool. UMAP is an open source project and uh, you can help and contribute by for example reporting issues so when you have an issue something that is not working you can report this to our repository the repository is, for example, find through the about section in UMAP. And here you can report issues of different kinds so that we can fix them and help you with these. UMAP also comes with a email list that you can sign up for at the first page here on the UMAP manual down here. Okay, uh, going back to UMAP and QGIS. First, some small things about QGIS. We have, as you've seen before, a layers panel. And also here is the map canvas where you can see all the maps. And you also have a browser um, window here or a panel that is quite useful where you can add data directly instead of going up to layers and add your layers here. Here they are shown directly. So for example, the data that I downloaded in the, fir in the first exercise, you can find them here. And then you can just drag and drop these data sets down here. So for example, I can take this land cover data set and drag it down here so now it's added to my QGIS project. There are different data types in GIS and the two main that you should be aware of is the raster data set so an example is the one you see here where each pixel is representing something. In this case we have the digital surface model that shows the height of either ground or buildings in this area. Another type of data set are vector data sets. And here we have a building data set with building footprints. Vector data set are built up from points, lines, and polygons. And the differences between these data sets uh, the main difference is that as raster is pretty much an image uh, in vector data can also have more attribute data connected to, to it. So here you have, for example, when I right click on buildings, you have an attribute table. So we can open this and then we can see all different kinds of information, table data that you can uh, find for different objects. So for example, if I go back here and use this select features here, I can select this one. And now you ha I have highlighted this one. I can go in again in the attribute table and then show selected features. And now you can see all the attributes that are assigned to this particular polygon here. 
UMAP makes use mostly of raster data, but in some cases, vector data is also required and needed. To deselect, you can use this button over here. I will close the buildings or stop viewing the buildings data set. The building data set are still loaded, but it's not viewed here in the map canvas. One main thing that is important when working with GIS data is coordinate reference systems. So each data set has a coordinate references system, CRS in QGIS, but also the project itself has a coordinate system. So here you see the coordinate system that we are using now. You can click on this one to get more information on this coordinate system. So we are using SWIRF 991200, which is a local national, uh, is a national Swedish uh, reference system. Here are all the details of this reference system, for example. So I strongly recommend you to have all your data in the same coordinate system. And to get, if you don't have them in the same system, you need to reproject them into the correct system. Or if there are no coordinate system related to a data set, you need to define that data set. That is either done here in, you can reproject the data layer, in this case, a vector layer data set. Or when it comes to raster data set, you can assign a projection or you can also reproject this data into another coordinate system. QGIS has extensive documentation and I recommend for you who are not so well into GIS in general and QGIS in particular, you go into the documentation site here on the qgis.org website. You can find documentation, you can find a user guide, you can find an extensive training manual and also a gentle introduction to GIS in general. Going back to UMAP, in UMAP use a specific kind of data and one of the most essential one is the one you see here, the digital surface model. We have also been acquainted with the canopy digital surface model, the CDSM, which is representing vegetation, high vegetation. And I also loaded a land cover data set, which includes state land cover of different so you have, for example, buildings and grass, asphalt, or what we call paved surfaces. There are seven classes of the land cover data sets, and you will find out more about this later on. Other information that is usually important are, for example, population density data sets and also meteorological data sets. We will go through them later on also. One thing that is, that is very important uh, when working with UMAP is to use the appropriate scale when you are uh, investigating a certain uh, feature when it comes to urban climatology. This is a very detailed data set. It has a resolution of one meter. For example, the DSM, as you see here, we can go into the properties and go to information you can find all kinds of information on this data set you can see that the units are in meters this is the number of pixels in x and y direction and you can also find the pixel size down here so it's a one meter data set and i recommend to have all data set in the same spatial resolution if possible sometimes you need to aggregate your data by um, 
aggregating them into larger spatial units. That is usually done by adding uh, or aggregate data into a grid. And that will be explained in uh, another video later on.